We got the NASCAR talk out the way. That was fun. Big shout out to Cody for rocking with us. But it's fight night. And that's why. Oh, yeah. We, oh, yeah. Yeah. For the trilogy, the Gypsy King versus the Bronze Bomber part three, the 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 the, the match to take it all. Uh, this is the, this is the rematch clause because Deontay did lose his belt last year when they uh, when they fought back in, uh, in in February. He is back after all of the controversy. Eric, me and you have been talking about this thing for so long just because we weren't even supposed to be here right now for the third fight. It was actually supposed to be Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. Um, that got taken off the board completely and. Now we are back, the trilogy uh, for that coveted WBC heavyweight championship belt, Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder. What's going to be different? What's going to be the same tonight? I think uh, there are a couple things that's going to be different. I think we got to rewind to get to the point we're at now because, as you mentioned, we weren't sure if we were going to get the fight. So many things got in the way of these two gentlemen getting back in the ring because when they fought last year in January, late January, after that result of Tyson Fury really dominating, we assume, oh, that, tri that third fight is coming up really soon. And then obviously we were hit with COVID. Then we were hit with the, with the slow play of whether Joshua and, and Fury would be the next fight to the point where an arbitrator had to get involved and said, no, Deontay deserves his rematch first. So then that's how we end up getting to tonight. In terms of what's going to be different, I want to start there. The first thing that's most noticeable is this is the heaviest Deontay Wilder has ever entered the ring. Yes. Uh, and, and he looks jacked. Let's call it what it is. Um, this might be the best shape he's ever been in, in his professional career. This is the strongest he's looked. Uh, we've seen the videos of him bench pressing 350 pounds, which is absurd. You know I what I'm saying? That ran back in my heyday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that was life for us. You know what I'm saying? But, but for Deontay, welcome to the club. But, um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but in, in terms of that, that's the first thing that's noticeably different. The second, obviously, is the corner of Deontay Wilder. Great friend of the show, Mark Breland. We know he won't be there. They had their falling out after the second fight. Uh, JD's won't be the head trainer as Malik Scott has taken over that spot. So that's another thing that's going to be different. And then I think the third thing that's going to be different in this fight, and this is for both fighters, I just think that the the any newness that's brought is going to have to be something that was brought in the recent camp. They fought a total of 19 rounds. They felt each other's power. Obviously, Tyson was knocked down two times in the first fight. Deontay was knocked down two times in the second fight. So they know what, the, what each fighter brings as far as power and stylistically. So I don't think there are any secrets in the ring, unless it's something brand new that they worked on that we've never seen in the ring from either one of these guys. It's going to be one of those comfort levels where it's like, I know what you got, you know what I got, and now it's a matter of getting it on. Yeah, time to go to war. Right, absolutely. Man, yeah, I'm, I'm just really looking forward to this. Um, I do think... and. I, Obviously, you know, it's a still a little bit of, of a home team bias because, you know, Deontay Wilder is a friend of the show. But I, I think that Deontay Wilder um, makes the, the necessary adjustments and he comes out victorious and he, he takes that belt back from Tyson Fury. Um, you know, something about I, just, I feel I don't I don't know if Tyson Fury is is all in on this fight like he was the previous ones, just because I, I don't know, I feel like. He's kind of a he's arrogant in the sense of already got the job done. So I, I just feel like he, you know, something's going to be a little bit different. I think Deontay Wilder uh, gets the gets the win and gets the belt back. Well, I mean, that's a good point because I think psychologically, both of them have a hurdle to clear. For Tyson Fury, it's a little bit of this wasn't the fight I was really expecting. So, like you said, you know, you don't want to be too arrogant and feel like man, we wasn't even supposed to be fighting this dude. We were supposed to be getting Anthony Joshua. And then on top of that, you can't eliminate the human element of he just watched Anthony Joshua lose, and that was supposed to be their biggest payday. So you got to wonder, like, are you as motivated as you should be? Because he himself, this is the heaviest he's ever entering the ring as well. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, he's never been a cut-up type boxer. He's never looked the part the way Deontay Wilder does. But nonetheless, this is still the heaviest he's been. He almost 280 pounds when he touched the scale yesterday. Um, so there's that aspect for him. For Deontay, it's something to prove. And it's the psychological aspect of the last time I was in the ring with this guy, it didn't go well for me. I got beat up. I took some punishment. And that was the first time in my career where I wasn't the baddest man in the ring. And so he's got to overcome that mental obstacle as well of how do I get back to where I was before that fight? You know, what's going to happen the first time he lands a really good clean shot on me 
And that leads me to the point that I want to ask you on. For Deontay Wilder, he's 35 years old. He's been a great heavyweight. We, we, we're not going to overlook that just because of the last performance. But is this a make or break fight for him in terms of his career? Because at 35 years old, about to be 36, if he loses tonight, where does he go? Is this one of those fights where if he loses, he might have to ride off into the sunset? Okay, if he loses, I don't think it's a, it's a ride off into the sunset fight, but I do think this is a game-changing, career-making fight for him as far as him being in the discussion of the, the, the top dog in boxing. Uh, he can't, I, I, won't, I won't say he can't lose. I, I'll say he can't get knocked out. If he gets knocked out, then yeah, then that's then it's, it's a wrap. He can still he'll still get a couple of fights because he'll still get a check because it's, it's boxing. If he, as long as he wants to get back in the ring, somebody will cut him a check. But as far as him being on that top tier elite status, if he gets knocked out, it's over with. Now, if they go the distance and it's back and forth, and you know a decision goes to Fury, and we're like, all right, well, I'm not mad at that. It could have gone either way. Then yeah, he he can still he can still continue to move on. Then maybe. He takes the Joshua fight next, while uh, Fury takes. Um, I forget the guys. Got to just beat Anthony Joshua. You know they go at it. To, check. Yeah, to try to unify the belts, and then maybe we come back if Deontay Wilder can beat Anthony Joshua. Then we maybe we come back for Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder four, and because it was a, a close decision, we want to see that fight now. You know what I mean? So. I think I think yeah I think as long as he doesn't get knocked out, um, I don't see I don't see his corner thrown in the towel this time around. Much respect to Mark Breland, that's that's family to the show. Um, but and 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 again, I'm I'm not even mad at him for for the decision that he made, just because he's someone that had a very long career in the sport of boxing. And you know what? At, at the end of the day, you know, call it what you want to call it. Wilder might have wanted to finish the fight. Maybe everybody else might have wanted to finish to finish that fight but you know if he saw something that just that means that man got a lot of love for you a lot of care for you that he didn't want this to be your demise in boxing because you stayed in there a little bit too long and you know you and I know I mean we we can go back to the the fight with uh Deontay Wilder and Arthur Spilka at the Barclay Center and he has to go to the to the hospital right after that fight you know what I mean so I understand you know, Mark Breland and, and where, he's, where he's coming from with that. And I also understand Deontay's side. You know, there was, I think the saying is, um, an honorable death is to die on the field of battle, right? So, you know, I also get that as well. Um, but yeah, but but just, just to, to, to wrap things up, yeah, I think um, as long as it's not a knockout, I think he's going to be just fine. Well, I think Mark Breland uh, took unnecessary heat for that. Mark Breland did the right thing. His yeah. job is to protect the fighter. Um, it was noticeable that Deontay was never the same after getting knocked down in that third round. The shot to the, you know, the ear, he's bleeding out of his ear. His legs kind of, he looked on wobbly legs the rest of the fight. Yeah. And Breland did the right thing. And then also hearing from Deontay that his legs were a little drained. I don't know how true this was from the outfit he was wearing. But if, if your legs were drained, that's even more reason that Breland should want to stop the fight. I'm not going to put you out there in harm's way. The yeah. fight gets stopped in the seventh round. I'm not going to leave you out there for five more rounds. If, if you're having trouble mustering the energy to get through these rounds, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's the quickest way to have a short career. So he did the right thing tonight. I, I agree. I don't expect to see any towels get thrown in. You never know the sport of box and I don't expect it. However, tonight is critical for, for uh, Deontay Wilder to show us again, one that he can pick himself up off the mat because you take that tough loss. But also we saw the videos with Malik Scott, you're working on new techniques. Can those new techniques translate to actually being in the ring or will you go back to what you're comfortable doing once the fight starts? Because make no mistake, Deontay Wilder is one of the few fighters in the history of the sport, not just this era, the history that packs lightning in that one hand that can alter the fight. I mean, a lot of times he can be losing a fight, but you won't stop watching because you know that one he has that one hit a quitter that can flip this fight on his ear and, and end it. So when you we say know that, that. let's go back to the Ortiz fight with me and you going back and forth. Right. With Ortiz, <laughs> the Ortiz fight is a prime example of that. Uh, Berman Stavern, you know what I'm saying? Chris Ariola, all these fights that you looked at and you're like, oh, Deontay, did bam. Oh, never mind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he may not have looked sharp, but it don't matter because yeah. that right hand landed. Um, and so for me, I want to see, can we see at least a little bit more of a jab from Deontay? 
Yes. You know, he's never gonna he's never gonna be a technically gifted boxer because that's not his style. And I get it. He took up the sport late as well. But give me a little bit more of a jab. Use that length. You know, he's he's still a tall fighter as well. Don't get it confused just because he's a little shorter than Tyson Fury. He's still a big man and tall and lanky. Use that reach a little bit. Keep him at at, at bay and then unload with the right hand. Um, and I would also like to see him fight less off his back foot a little bit. I yeah. thought he did that a little bit too much. Um, in comparison to the first and second fight trip, because obviously you watch him a lot as well. What what do you think is his best course of action tonight to be able to beat Tyson Fury? Um, one thing you already mentioned is the jab. The second thing, and I think this is this may even be a little bit more important than the jab. You cannot continue to let Tyson Fury throw all his weight on you. I thought that was a big part of the second fight. Every time I, every time I turn around, Tyson Fury is just you know tying him up, putting all that weight on top of him. And then, you know, we're talking about the weight difference is, is very significant in this case. So you saw, you're already a big man, but you got an even bigger man who's going to be even bigger than he was in the last fight trying to lay all that weight on top of you because he's already tight. Tyson, and I think th that's the one thing about him adding on this weight. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt him as far as in, in the stamina department if they do wind up going later into this fight. So with that being said, he's going to want to tie you up a lot more. He's going to want to hold and rest on you a lot more. So I think if you can get out of them, get out of those holes quick, don't let them keep putting in the weight and more weight and more weight on you. I think that will make a huge difference in this fight because that will actually help to, to maintain Deontay Wilder's stamina. If he's every five seconds, he's not trying to get an extra 30, 40 pounds off of him. Cause you, you, it's a, there's a noticeable difference between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury when they're next to each other in the ring. So I think if, if he can do those two things, I think he wins the fight. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Tyson Fury is a big man. Um, just yesterday alone, it was, I believe a 38 pound difference just at the weigh in. Um, I don't, think it'll be much higher than that because it wasn't like either one of them was was kind of uh, weight draining themselves to make weight yeah yeah but again on fight night a 40 pound difference in those later rounds I mean really could be the difference between winning and losing like you said I I think Tyson Fury is going to try to smother him I think one of the things that Tyson Fury realized from the difference from the first to the second fight was that even though Fury is the better boxer his best course of action is actually to come forward force Deontay to fight on his back foot. And then, like you said, and then tie him up and smother those punches. Never allow him to really unload that right hand and kind of smother the punch so it doesn't have the same impact. One of the narratives that I don't like that's coming out of this from the second fight, leading into this third fight, though, is a lot of people, for some reason, you are using the term Deontay Wilder got knocked out. He didn't get knocked out. He got knocked down. Yeah. He didn't get knocked out. And the reason I bring that up is because psychologically those are two different things Deontay Wilder I think is just trying to overcome the fact that he lost to get knocked out is a different mindset that a fighter goes into a fight with because then at that point you become scared of the other guy's power like I don't want to get laid out again that's not what happened I also think one of the things that gets overlooked from the second fight was Deontay Wilder had success in the first two rounds of that fight what changed the fight obviously was the punch that lands on the ear in the third round and then from that point on, Deontay Wilder seems to not have any balance. His equilibrium's off. We see the eardrum. And he, he kind of had the deer in the headlights look at that point because he didn't know how to get himself back on track. Yeah. So to your point, as well as keep the, the, the weight off you, use your jab. I think there are some things from the second fight that Deontay Wilder can translate to the third fight and be successful. He's got to keep Tyson Fury off him, though. Yeah, that, yeah, that, 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 that's it, man. That's that's going to be the keys. Just because, again, man, that, that weight is a lot to have something. You know, imagine you got somebody dead weight, you try to carry them. Think about what, you know, what firemen go through and they got to carry somebody out that building and that's that dead weight you carry. And that's that's different than you just go to pick somebody up when you carry, yeah. carry an extra 40 pounds of dead weight on top of you and you're already trying to gasp for, for air to get as much oxygen intake as you can because you're exerting everything, trying to throw punches and try to, to, to duck and bob and weave from, you know, from getting hit. So, I, listen, man, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have a couple of brewskis tonight. I think I'm going to order some wings. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a night, man. We're going to have a party tonight to watch this fight. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of those events. Again, uh, people love to say the sport of boxing is dying. That's not true because 
every couple of months we get these premiere fights like this that force everyone around the TV. Um, we, we, we're we fortunate not only we get this one uh, tonight, but in a month we get Canelo Alvarez, which is going to be another one of those moments. Mm -hmm. So the sport is thriving and doing well. Obviously, it always helps when it's the heavyweights involved. Trip, before we wrap up, though, I need to know. I know your heart is telling you Wilder. What is your mind telling you? Give me your prediction and how you think this fight goes. All right. Honestly, bro, and it's again, because I'm, I'm all, obviously, you know, I'm team Deontay no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Like that man welcomed us into his home type, you know, type of situation. So I'm always going to have a special place. He's always going to be, you know, on, on, on this side of things. Um, but I, I honestly feel like he's made the necessary adjustments. I like the fact that he bulked up a little bit more. This kind of reminds me of watching Creed when he came back and uh, you know what I mean? So I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing from Beyonce. And then on the other side of that, you know, and again, you know, just because we've seen, we know that uh, Tyson Fury does have a, a, um, a history of dealing with uh, with mental illness, you know, I just I don't know if his mindset is is completely a thousand percent locked in like you really should be. And if and if that's the case, then I got to give the, the advantage to Deontay Wilder. I agree with some of the points you made there. Um, I, I would love to see Deontay win this fight. I'm be honest, because I think the heavyweight division would just be a little more exciting with him as the champ. And then also it would set up the opportunity for the fourth fight with him and Tyson Fury. I just think Tyson is, is the superior boxer. Yes. And I think the weight, I think the weight will play a factor in the second half of this fight. I think Deontay is going to do a better job of controlling the pace, which to me is the most important thing in this fight. I, I, always heart back on pace when it comes to boxing because what sometimes people don't realize is the person who takes control of the center of the ring and dictates the pace nine times out of ten is going to win that round that's what judges are looking for who is controlling this fight so Deontay's got to come out early that's one of the things I, I hope that Malik Scott worked with him on come out early be aggressive set the tone and then force Tyson Fury to adjust to you and not the other way around um I think he will have that. I think he'll have his moments in this fight. I think he's going to land a big right hand at some point. But I do think the longer the fight goes on, it plays to Tyson Fury's advantage because he's the, the superior boxer and because, again, the 40 pounds at some point will take a factor in it. I think it goes to the cards. I think Tyson Fury wins a close fight on the cards, um, which, again, no, it wouldn't be anything shameful for Deontay to lose in that fashion. I just think that's the way it goes. But I do like your point about the mental state of Tyson Fury because there's some of the things that I've noticed in the way his, he's led up to the fight that seem more frustrated than actually wanting to be here. He seems like a guy who's more frustrated with the fact that he's got to fight Deontay for the third time, that he's not fighting Anthony Joshua, and that also Joshua just lost, which probably has cost him the biggest payday of his life. So I would not be surprised if he's not 100% focused early in this fight, allowing Deontay Wilder to take advantage of him. Um, a close fight, I'm going to give the slight advantage to Tyson Fury, though. And, you know, to go back to your, you know, you just talking about boxing being a dying sport. Boxing got us up here Saturday morning recording. So then, oh, then, we got to get that working. <laughs> yeah. We got to get that working. That's a, that's a, that's an absolute fact. Uh, let me quickly, before we got here, let me shout out the sponsors. Of course, big shout out to Petro Home Services, uh, Kmart, the Rosado Firm, Soundview Liquors as well. And uh, make sure you guys are following us on all our, all our social media, Instagram and Twitter at uh, Real Fan Talk, Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk. Subscribe to that YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash uh, for the fans productions. And of course, if you're not in New York city on Thursday nights from eight to 9 PM, you can always watch from anywhere in the world at real fans, real Just click that red button on the home page. And uh, while you're online, make sure you, you, you follow on the podcast too, man. Real fans, real talk podcast, the Sanchez show podcast. And of course, for our grown and sexy audience shooting the shit, man, we out here working. <laughs> full yes, time. sir. Yes, sir. Nothing but that work we putting out here. Hey, for myself, my main man, Trip Young, Real Fans, Real Talk, The Sanchez Show. Enjoy the fight tonight. So, we'll see you guys real soon. We out. Peace. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real, real Talk. Live from the camp. Hey. Come on, live. Bye, the camp. Uh-huh. This is Hi, Real Fans, Real Talk. Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk.
real talk, we as real as you thought. Real